neighbors are fed up. They say this scene is a familiar one. The latest on a hit and run at a Lexington home. We're tracking the investigation after deputies find a man shot to death inside a rental cabin. The Kentucky Wildcats are gearing up for a night game on Thursday. What they've learned that could help them this week. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 5. Good afternoon. It's not the kind of wake-up call anyone wants. A car slammed into a family's home this morning. That crash happened just before 10 on Buckhorn Drive near Alumni. Police say the car had been stolen and the driver ran away. As WKYT's Kristen Kennedy shows us, this isn't the first time it's happened. It's our top story at 5. Some car just runs into the house all the time. Quentin Taylor's used to wreck next door. I just heard a big old boom, like, Err. But Anthony Clayton isn't. You're Err and a car's in our window, you know what I mean? So, how's your morning go, you know what I mean? How's you, what happened when you drank your coffee? The noise was enough to wake up and shake up his family of four. I knocked us back into the wall, like he went in the closet, I hit the door. By the time we got up and got to see what was going on, you know, he was gone. Clayton's first concern was for the youngest in the house Monday, his three-year-old boy. That was my first reaction, is he okay, you know what I mean? But yeah. He's fine, I'm fine. Officers aren't sure if the driver of the car is fine. They say he ran away right after the crash. The car, we're told, is a stolen one, and they've already taken a teen passenger into custody. About two years ago, or maybe three, somebody did the same thing. Talk on the street Monday morning was about the half dozen or so times others have flown past the stop sign at the intersection. Neighbors don't know what will keep it from happening again. I really don't have a constructive idea short of a barricade. Only one person living inside the home had to go to the hospital today. Officers say that he had non-life threatening injuries. We did see him walking around here a little later on. He told us that he is okay. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. The owners of the stolen car say they recognize it on the news this morning. It's been missing since the first of the month. They told us they're grateful to get it back. Police want to question three people about a man found shot to death. The Pulaski County Sheriff's Office made the discovery in a rental cabin at Pulaski County Park yesterday afternoon. Deputies checked the cabin after receiving a tip. WKYT's Sean Moody is tracking the investigation. Investigators say Danny Poor lived in Louisville but was from Monticello. Now they're trying to figure out who shot him and left him dead inside this cabin. Pulaski County Sheriff's Deputy Carl Kleinard said they got a tip that led them to the rental cabins at the Pulaski County Park around 2 o'clock Sunday afternoon. Inside that cabin, he said they found Danny Poor dead with gunshot wounds. It, apparently, this individual or some individual had rented a cabin, and this is where the crime occurred. There are a few other cabins in that clearing nearby, but investigators said there weren't any other people around at the time. They're looking for anyone who may have seen something. We have three people or four people of interest that we'd like to talk to that we're seeking at this time. This afternoon, Deputy Kleinert said those persons of interest they'd like to speak with are Kara Whitney Bell, Jesse W. Brown, and Rexel K. Brown. Investigators say they're not sure exactly when Poor was killed, but they believe it was within the previous 24 hours before they found it. In Pulaski County, Sean Moody, WKYT. Somerset Police, Burnside Police, and Kentucky State Police are all helping with the investigation. Monday is off to a sunny and pleasant start, but we might see a shower or two tonight. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell is here now with an early check of your forecast. Hi, Jim. And we are tracking a few just outside of our area. Some of the clouds are starting to at least sweep into portions of central Kentucky out there, but generally still holding on to quite a bit of sunshine. And you can see it here on our live sky cameras. We're looking right outside the station, but the clouds are also starting to filter in to some degree. Eventually, those clouds will produce a few showers, maybe even a few thunder showers later on tonight. Temperatures running in the mid, low, and upper 70s. So we're all over the spectrum around central Kentucky, closer to that mid level with uh, our friends out in southeastern Kentucky, just a smidge cooler. Nice southerly wind really fueling these temperatures out ahead of that front. That front will take a bite out of temperatures, though. And look at what it's doing right now, just lighting up the skies there across parts of uh, Indiana. That's the leading edge that will be cruising in our area here later on this evening into the nighttime period as well. 
As a matter of fact, just a little while ago, the Storm Prediction Center highlighted a chunk of Kentucky under what they call the marginal risk of severe weather that's out to our west, but barely getting into our area. So maybe one or two of these might have at least some strong or even severe characteristics associated with them. And then, of course, we get the cool air that lingers behind it outside that isolated severe weather threat. We'll track all of this in great detail coming up in just a few minutes. Jim, thank you. An overturned tanker truck closed a Central Kentucky road this morning. I'm told the tanker swerved to miss a car making a U turn, dropped off of Grafenberg Road in Anderson County, and overturned. The tanker was hauling 6,600 gallons of pure grain, 191 proof alcohol, headed to Wild Turkey Distillery. Some of that alcohol leaked, causing a fire hazard. So there's a, you know, a concern about the flammable contents of the trailer, uh, but we do have uh, the safety precautions necessary uh, to, to remedy that situation. The tanker crash caused a septic tank to swerve into the other lane. A car traveling the other direction clipped it and crashed into a culvert. The driver of the car had to be flown to UK hospital, but is expected to be okay. The drivers of the tanker and the septic truck were not hurt. The flooding situation has started to improve in South Carolina. Heavy rains last weekend caused rivers to rise and breached dams across the state. Governor Nikki Haley says they've had no issues with hospitals, power, airports, or transit today. Now the goal is to find new places for all of those who had to leave their homes. Our focus um, now is very much counties reducing the number of people in shelters, which is us making sure that they have good permanent um, housing and good permanent placement and where they're going to go. So we're going to be working on that all this week. Governor Haley says assessment teams will be out across the state to determine exactly how much damage the floods caused. Voters will get their first chance to see the Democratic presidential candidates debate one another tomorrow night. As Craig Boswell shows us, a new poll finds both the Democratic and Republican frontrunners scoring high in a category they would rather avoid. Democratic presidential candidates say they're eager for Tuesday night's debate. I'm looking forward to the Democratic Party finally joining this game and having a debate about how we solve our nation's problems. Martin O'Malley, Jim Webb, and Lincoln Chafee hope to grab some of the spotlight from Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. What we need are answers to the problems, not just campaign rhetoric. The latest CBS News poll shows Clinton has increased her lead over Sanders, but a separate poll indicates the frontrunner has some work to do. It shows that only 35 percent of primary voters see her as honest and trustworthy, two points ahead of Donald Trump. Some of that skepticism was on display during a stop at a No Labels event in New Hampshire for voters from both parties. But I don't think that you're a friend to woman. How, what, it... I knew I shouldn't have picked her. But Trump does have a strong base of support. You know what? At the Tea Party, I, I'll tell you about the Tea Party. These are people, in all fairness, because you can't really, these are people that love this country. And that base is helping him maintain a wide lead over the GOP field. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. CNN, which hosts Tuesday night's debate, has two new polls out which show Clinton with a commanding lead in the early voting states of South Carolina and Nevada. Big Blue fans won't have to wait until Saturday to see the Cats in action this week. The Wildcats play a special Thursday night game at Commonwealth Stadium. WKYT's Rob Bromley is here <clears throat> to show us how they're getting ready, Rob. Well, it is a big, big football game. Auburn coming into Commonwealth Stadium Thursday night. The Cats have been practicing, but they have also had a chance to rest up, which is so important after five games. Now, the last time out, the Cats were fortunate to come away with a victory over EKU. They have certainly learned not to underestimate any opponent, come out and play with a chip on their shoulder. I hope so. I hope so. You know, you have to ask them. You know, we have had good practices, you know, and uh, I've seen good energy and I've asked them to invest off the field and really uh, do some things to take care of their bodies to try to heal up and get some rest as we go through a tough stretch that we all know is coming. So it is the first Thursday night game in Commonwealth Stadium history and the first for UK since 1939. Cats and the Tigers kickoff is set for 7 o'clock on ESPN. Now it sounds like Kentucky could be without defensive tackle Corey Johnson. Mark Stoops said he was rolled up in practice. The good news is tackle Reggie Ment is coming back this week. 
Thank you, Rob. The Auburn game is sold out. Kentucky's fourth sellout in the five home games this season. Students returned to a community college today for the first time since a deadly shooting. Nine people died when a gunman opened fire in a classroom at Umpqua Community College in Roseburg, Oregon on October 1st. The school's president says some students skipped class because they didn't want to face reporters. Others say they were ready to go back. If I didn't go back, I feel like I would be defeated somehow that the evil man who set out to do all this and cause all this hurt and pain, I feel like he would be winning. Governor Kate Brown welcomed students back this morning. Eight comfort dogs will also be on campus all week to help students. Houston police continue to search for suspects in a deadly shooting on the Texas Southern University campus. 18-year-old Brent Randall and another person were shot outside a student housing complex Friday. Police took two people into custody after the shooting but have since released them. A dentist who killed a well-known lion will not face charges. James Palmer shot and killed Cecil the lion during a hunt in Zimbabwe in July. Police in Zimbabwe and the National Prosecuting Authority have cleared Palmer of wrongdoing. A cabinet official says the country no longer wants to extradite Palmer and he can return to the country as a tourist because he hasn't broken the country's hunting laws. Southwest Airlines have returned to normal following a major computer glitch. The problem caused long lines for customers over the weekend. Passengers had to be given handwritten tickets and most were checked in manually using backup servers. This morning, Southwest still had some displaced customers and lost baggage. Very frustrated, but I mean, we understand it was a glitch in the system. But it was, I go, we're just happy we're going home. The problem delayed about 500 Southwest flights. Kentucky collected $24 million more in taxes last month than it did a year ago. Revenue for the state's general fund grew more than 2.5% in September. The fund is made up of income and sales taxes. The road fund didn't fare as well. It fell 20.5% in September, mostly because of a drop in the gas tax rate. A Lexington neighborhood broke ground on a new project that will help working parents. McConnell's Trace is building a daycare at Trailwood Lane and White Oak Trace. The daycare will be open to anyone, but people living in McConnell's Trace will get preference and a 10% discount. We still have quite a few open lots, and they're getting built on every day. We're having more and more people living here. And it's really important that we have something that's meaningful to the neighbors here. And having a daycare right here close is just a really good thing. The neighborhood is also building a pool and fitness center. All the new additions are expected to be finished by the spring. Time now for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. A recall alert if you recently bought cheese at Whole Foods. The store is recalling its Papillion Organic Rockford Cheese. There is concern the cheese might be tainted with listeria. No illnesses have been reported so far. Customers can return the cheese to Whole Foods for a full refund. If you have diabetes, red wine might help you stay heart healthy. Marley Hall looks at the results of a new study on the benefits. Hey there, I'm all done. 51 year old Garrett Rubin says he has to watch out for everything in his diet since being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Fats and salt and sugar. Now, a new large study published in the Annals of Internal Medicine says a daily glass of red wine may actually help people with type 2 diabetes. One to two glasses of red wine for men and up to one glass of red wine for women daily at dinner over a two-year period resulted in lower blood sugars and a decreased um, development of heart disease. Red wine also modestly increased levels of HDL or good cholesterol and lowered overall cholesterol. Dr. Manisha Sood says researchers have known for a while moderate amounts of alcohol are fine for diabetics, but the jury was out on which kind of alcohol had the most benefit. So it is the phenols, it is the resveratrol, um, it is the tannins. You know, they all work together with the ethanol possibly to result in these positive changes. Rubin says diet, exercise, and medication are still his first line of defense, but now. Now. Since I have the choice, I think red wine might be the thing. Marley Hall, CBS News, New York.
People with diabetes in the study generally did not drink alcohol and ate a Mediterranean diet. If you are in the market for a new television, you might want to hold out for Black Friday. Consumer Reports is out with its Black Friday discount predictions. They expect 60 to 65 inch 4K ultra high definition televisions to drop from $1,500 to about $1,000. Other Black Friday trends include more price matching deals and discounts sent to shoppers on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram.